Hey YouTubers, I thought I'd make another video. Um, there's been a few changes in the last couple of months. Uh, we've had some pretty hot weather here in Australia and to be quite honest with you, since I bought the telescope I've only taken it out once and that was just in the first week. Um, since then there's a lot that's happened and um, I'm going to do an unboxing of something I purchased um, in the right today. But also I want to talk about the telescope. Um, now, we'll go to the telescope first. Now, my first video was about the um, Skywatcher 1000mm. Uh, one thing I didn't realise was how big this telescope is, uh, which made things worse when you added the EQ5. Um, now, I don't regret getting the EQ5. I um, also bought a motor for it as well, so it can track and, um, a polar alignment um, scope that sits inside the head of the uh, EQ5. Um, but I haven't taken it out and polar aligned it because just the weather's been too hot. Now we're in autumn now, so um, I can feel the weather cooling down. It's a little bit warm today, but it's going to get really cold over the next uh, month or so, which means it'll be far more exciting to actually take a telescope out. Um, so what happened to the 1000mm? Uh, well, um, I couldn't sleep for a couple of weeks because I knew that little voice was going on in my head saying this is way too big, you, you didn't need to get a suspect this big. So I emailed uh, Oz Hutton and I said look, can I return it, I don't mind paying a surcharge and they said yeah, no worries and I said look what I want to do is buy a more expensive telescope that's actually shorter and this is it. So this is the ED80 but it's actually uh, got better glass in it, it's actually a much better telescope, it's got a few extra things. So I just want to quickly show it to you, because once I got, once this arrived, after the other one came back, I was, um, I was stoked. Um, but then we had the EQ5 problem, and I'll go to that, and that's what this box is for. Anyway, so, um, I might just turn this here like that. Now, what I love about this, other than the quality, is that it's very light. It's not light, light, but you know what I'm saying? It's the 1000 was ridiculous, um, and it's also got the best thing about this one. Also, it's got the um, if you take this off, it's got the fine tune focuser, um, which is very important because uh, if you're doing things like astrophotography, which is what I mainly use it for, um, it's good to find focus really well. Um, and I love that I bought a refractor. Um, advantages of the refractor for me are um, that you can use this during the day. Um, so if you want to go out and set up near the beach or even, you know, a mile out from the beach, you can set up on surfers, people surfing and doing things like that. Well, I haven't done that yet, but uh, like I said, um, there are plenty of things I've planned to do with it, but at the moment, um, I haven't, I've only used it once and I've set it up on the EQ5. Now the EQ5 is very laborious because it's an equatorial mount and it's massive and it's heavy and it was meant for the 1000mm. Um, I don't want to have to lug this EQ5 out there um, just to take a few shots of the moon, uh, which I, I like to do, or even to find Saturn or Neptune or one of the other large planets. Um, it's got the hood on it. <coughs> Just like the other one, except it's a smaller version, better glass. It actually does come with a um, finder scope. It's got, I think it's exactly the same finder scope as a millimeter. Um, it comes with a case as well. Uh, interesting thing about the case, though, my case was actually um, damaged a little bit, um, and they sent me two eyepieces as a sorry. So over a hundred dollars worth of eyepieces, um, and they were plus ones too. So now I've got. Um, this came with it, so this is a 2 inch. Um, uh, when you use that in our astro photography, the image goes upside down, so I try not to use that. I just put the camera straight on the back of this. Um, and I do have an attachment for it. Um, that's not really the attachment. Well, it is and it isn't. Um, that is for the camera. But there's a, there's a, a long one. You need to actually have a, um, an extension tube, otherwise, you'll find that you'll focusing you won't get a focal point actually um, now the eyepiece that this comes with is a good eye relief this is a 28 millimeter um, as you can see it's massive but the image of the moon 
is razor sharp and there's no um, chromatic aberration, which is that colouring around the moon. Um, if there is, it's subtle, it's, it's almost non-existent. Whereas with the 1000mm, it was quite obvious of the chromatic aberration. And um, so that's why I'm really pleased that they let me return the 1000mm and get the EDA-80. Still see nebulas and stuff with this anyway. Um, obviously, if you're going to do things like that, you need the, um, the EQ5 equatorial mount because you've got to track things like that because you've got a long aperture. But when you're taking photos of the moon, um, there's so much light, you've just got fast shutter speed. However, if you do want to, I think, take planets like, um, say, Saturn, which I'm looking forward to. Saturn is going to be a little bit more visible, a little bit more often um, as the middle of the year comes through. Um, so I'd be excited and I'll definitely post a video if I, once I get Saturn and take photos of it. I'll also post star photos and when I do the moon finally. I just missed the super moon. It was cloudy. Didn't even have this. So this is um, another tripod and I'll go to that now. So yeah, totally recommend the ED80. The image quality is amazing. Um, when I do start taking some photos of the moon, um, I will post them in, in, a, in a video. But at the moment I just want to show it to you. So let's go to the um, unboxing. So what's this? This is an old azimuth um, mount. And it's one of the new ones that they came out uh, in the last 12 months. I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a new type of um, mount. And um, I, was, I was frustrated with the EQ5 because I knew that I, there was a few nights during the past month or so that I, I wanted just to go out and take photos of the moon and then it was just you know, putting just the head of the EQ5 is well over 10 kilos. If you're in America, you can work out how many pounds that is, but <clears throat> um, 10 kilos plus is heavy. And um, I found it really frustrating. So I did some research, and um, lo and behold, Sky Watcher had these um, tripods. Now, Alt Azimuth. Now, the good thing about Alt Azimuth is, particularly this one, you go around 360, left and right, up and down, moves around very easily. Um, I can't remember what model number this was. This is the AZ5 mount, so you can look it up and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so it's a box within a box here. I've just put the one box here, this is the box within a box. So the old azimuth mount. Now, obviously I've got it because it's very versatile. It weighs less than uh, 5 kilos. Uh, it can support up to 5 kilos, maybe even 6. Um, my camera, telescope, Finder scope, everything all together would probably get to about 4.5 kilos. So it's the perfect tripod. It was a, um, an AZ3, I think it was called, um, but that only again went up to 3 kilos. So um, I haven't seen this up close, but I've heard, I've seen videos and I've heard a lot of great things about it. So let's just have a look at it. Well, I can tell you straight off, um, wow. It is, oh, this is what I love about it. With the EQ5, um, you had a tray uh, with the EQ5, and you had to screw the tray in. You know how frustrating it is. It takes you a good half an hour to set up the EQ5, if not longer, if you want to polar align it. And polar aligning here in Australia is ridiculous. The cool thing about this is like, you know, then you're already set up. I mean, obviously the legs are going to come down, and I'm pretty sure, there you go. We loosen them. I'm not pretty sure they come down. Just trying to figure out how to do it. How to do it. There you go. Just loosen it. Okay. okay. So we just leave them. Um, just have to work that out. We're going the wrong way. And I'm doing something wrong. There you go. Just loosened it too much before. Um, it's got a bubble. It's also got the, um, uh, the thread. Now the head of this um, can also be put on the EQ5 aluminium tripod. If you, I don't know what you'd need to do it. Um, I know that the EQ5 tripod may be a little bit bulky and stronger. I love this because on the video you could tell all they said was just to put it on and then twist it. So you put it on and I'm pretty sure you lower it and there you go. Oh, I hope you can see this in the video. Bang. So that's a lot easier to do than 
fill in with screws and that, especially if you're out in the dark. So this weighs nothing. I mean, honestly, you've got two fingers. Um, but it's strong, it's aluminium, and it's going to hold the head. Let's get to that part. Um, I know what's in here, so I'm just going to get the head out first. Now the head, oh, I love this. Um, I saw this, on, I've already seen it on some video. See, so you've got the notches here. Now the notches um, are for your, on my EQ5, like I said, it's got a thing where you can actually put it in as a notch. Um, the cool thing about this one as well, you can watch videos on it, but you can do these screws and have the head be 90 degrees aligned up here, not going out to the right. Um, if you had a heavier telescope, for example, and you wanted to have that extra support. Um, so this basically just goes straight in. Bang, it's done. That's how easy it is. Um, now you've got the knobs. The knobs here, obviously, have for the fine adjustment, and you just loosen um, with the screws here and it turns left and right. So, you know, you want to see the moon bang up and down. It's got your dovetail. Um, it's all made of the same sort of stuff as the EQ5. It's all solid, powder coated. Um, one thing I rang up about this was to make sure that, um, you've got a few little allen keys in here. Um, you need those to get these knobs off, which brings me to my next thing. And that is, I asked them to make sure that it came with these. Uh, what these are, oops, in that box. There's nothing in that box. That's because someone took it out. The guy actually took it out over the phone to make sure that I said to him, I want to make sure all these come with it. Because I think, um, although this, it's ideal to have these, I like the idea of having them stick away and just be a little bit more. So I would definitely be um, taking those off and they go on with a Phillips head screwdriver, not a little fiddly Allen key. But I think once these are on, I probably would leave the longer arms on just permanently. If I found that the longer arms were a pain, I'd leave the shorter arms on. But I love the fact that you've got both. Um, and I love, and I should just turn, we can turn around this way, have this in camera view. You can see what I'm talking about, like, if the weight of the telescope um, was too, like, had a bigger one and you're worried it was going to do that, but you'd always put the, a bit of a tip from a photographer, he's always had that long leg, uh, so that way, you know, it could never go up this way. Or some people may disagree and say this, but I think that's a lot easier to tip, because if you do it this way, you've got that one centre bit, it's not as easy to tip. It's always easy to tip this way, you can't tip it, so always a longer leg in line with the back of the telescope. But be mindful, as you're spinning it around, then you get that vulnerability once you get to this position. And it's a pretty sturdy telescope. Now, if you are worried about it tipping over, um, like I said, those two screws come off, and you can turn this, you're gonna have it like, so all the weight just comes straight down. Don't know if it's gonna be necessary. I mean, like I said, I'll be able to tell once the telescope is on, whether or not, um, Seems to be a lot of empty boxes here, and I'm just trying to work out why. I know what does come with it, and um, yeah, well, oh yeah, there's another box that's got something in it. Um, I'm trying to figure out what's in this box. I've got the arms, I've got the head, everything's here. Get a bit curious right now as to what's in this box. I'm trying to guess without. Ah, oh, no, it's in it. It's the extension. All right. Figure out. And I'm very pleased about this as well. Um, this is a solid extension. And what happens here is you would take this off, and you would put um, that on. And that screws underneath, and then you can screw the head. So basically, you've got that sitting up a little bit high. If you need it, it's a good option to have. So this did cost um, three sixty, I think, Australian. So um, definitely recommend this. Uh, this is the sort of thing that you you want to have if you want to just kind of um, be able to pop out really quickly, even with the head. As you can see, I can't even do this with one arm with the EQ5 head, it's just ridiculous. And this whole tripod, 
um, is excellent that you can just do that. Uh, in fact, you can even leave the head on there and just carry it out. And um, the good thing about it is because, um, unlike the other one, we've got screws. Pretty sure, there you go. You'd probably just leave it on there like this if you wanted to. Um, and then you can just kind of carry that so you can get it through the door and everything. And then when you go outside, you know, the rest is easy. Um, really looking forward to using it anyway. That's it. That's the video. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Post any questions. Um, I'm going to um, wait for a really cool cloudless night and set up the camera and this tripod and take some um, photos of or the moon to start with and who knows maybe some of the planets as well. See how we go. See ya.